All right, everyone. Welcome to another alumni and management series conversation. The AIM series is designed to provide our audience with a targeted conversation featuring a Monmouth University alumnus working in a management capacity in the professional world. What you learn from listening to the AIM series speakers is closely aligned to what you might learn from a professional development seminar when you're working full-time in your career. So the Leon Hess Business School is happy to provide this programming to help give you a head start on the competition. Before we get going, uh, I'm happy to welcome the Dean of the Business School, Dean Devisagayam, with some opening remarks. Welcome to the Alumni in Management series. This is a series of one-on-one -on -one conversations that's designed to bring in the expertise and experience of emergent leaders to our classrooms. We in the Leon Hess Business School believe that your learning outside the classroom is truly essential to supplement our learning inside the classroom. As you listen to the conversation this evening, focus in and relate it to your own experience, your own professional experience from jobs, from internships, and see what you can learn that would be of help to you right away, in the near future as you approach the job market, and in the distant future as you craft your own leadership path. My thanks to Professor Palazzolo for organizing this event. I must mention that uh, he's a proud alum of Monmouth himself. My thanks also to the alumni for bringing in their expertise and experience, sharing it with us so generously, and most of all, for the time and effort you're putting in to giving back something to our institution. Thank you. Finally, I thank each one of you for attending. I hope you learned something new today that you can apply beginning tomorrow. Enjoy. So we thank Dean Devisagayam for welcoming us here to the AIM series and his opening remarks tonight. Tonight we welcome Caitlin Walsh. Welcome to the AIM series, Caitlin. And to start, we're going to play a brief video of Caitlin introducing herself to everyone. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Walsh and I graduated from Monmouth University in 2014 with a major in business management and a minor in information technology. During that time, I was one of the founding fathers of AK Side Business Fraternity, a sister of ZTA sorority and a graduate of the Honor School. I'm originally from Warren, New Jersey, about an hour north from Long Branch, went to Watchung Hills Regional High School, and then found my way over to Monmouth. After I graduated in 2014, I stayed for another year to complete my MBA in 2015. From a professional standpoint, I've been working for Johnson Johnson for about almost nine years now. I started as an intern during the summer going to my senior year at Monmouth and haven't left the company since. I've had opportunities with a lot of different departments and working for a large global healthcare company has been such a great experience. I'm still learning more and more every day. Looking forward to sharing more with you soon. Thank you. Well, thank you for the introduction of yourself, Caitlin. That was great. Um, did you forget anything there? Anything else that we should no. know? I mean, that was fun watching myself. Um, haven't done that. So appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess I could touch on a little bit more about maybe why I chose Monmouth. I know we'll go into a little bit more of a professional standpoint later on. Um, but really, I think for Monmouth, I wasn't, wasn't my intent. Um, I was looking at larger schools, you know, not within New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey, wanted to kind of get out, branch out. Um, looked at schools in North Carolina, Pennsylvania, all over pretty much. Didn't want to stay by home. Um, however, it was recommended to me. You know, I kind of took it into consideration given the location next to the beach kind of agreed to it, did the campus tour and absolutely fell in love. Um, realized how welcoming and inviting the campus was, really how much um, 
I really did enjoy the smaller class sizes, thought I wanted a big school, realized it wasn't really for me. So um, really did, um, was really happy with my choice. Obviously it worked out, um, but really also didn't want to study business. I uh, was really looking into a more of a forensics kind of role. Um, you know, with some self-reflection, realized I was absolutely terrified of blood, probably wouldn't be the best fit for me. Um, so after doing some investigation with a different um, campus, with a different programs there, really settled on business management and IT. So kind of an interesting fun fact, but overall, I think it worked out well. I love stories that start that way. Like, hey, I was a business <laughs> major, didn't want to be a business major. Maybe Did not want it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Dig into that a little bit, a little bit more as we go along. Maybe tell us a little bit about more about your personal background, anything that you didn't hit on in, in the brief conversation here and in the, in the introduction video. Yeah, um, not much. I do a lot, you know, besides work, obviously takes up most of my time. Um, I do have a special needs puppy, takes up a lot of my time, whatever I don't have. And I do also try to make carve out some time for some volunteer work, um, you know, helping out the veterans locally around here. Um, but not too much. I think everyone's kind of in the same boat with the pandemic and kind of adjusting. So really, you know, focusing on work is no longer a nine to five kind of job, it takes up a little bit more time. So the professional or the personal life is a little bit lacking, I guess you can say right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been difficult. I, I'm just curious because you, you brought up some volunteer work you do. Um, how long have you been doing that volunteer work? Oh, um, also didn't have the choice. Kind of was born into it um, with a background of army and veterans in my family. So pretty much as soon as I was legally allowed to work, kind of helped volunteer with my dad, um, probably since before high school, even middle school. So wow. it's always kind of been something with our family. Wow. Wow. That's great. That's great. Uh, I find that most of our uh, successful alumni in the business world and in other uh, elements of society, there's usually a strong culture of giving back. So it seems like yeah. it seems like that's at play here with you too. Yeah, it's rewarding. Uh, <laughs> it is. And it, it feels, I mean, it always feels good to help someone, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So you graduated from Monmouth. You also graduated with your MBA from Monmouth. And maybe we'll mm -hmm. talk about that coming up in a little bit, um, because I think there are some folks here with us tonight who are in the five-year programs, so they may love to hear about your experiences in it. So let's, let's hold on to that for a bit. Yep. Um, you graduate from Monmouth, take us along your career path and you can start maybe with any internships you had during your undergraduate years um, that ultimately led you to your profession. What did you do after yeah. you graduated from Monmouth? So my professional experience has been kind of unique, I guess, not the typical path that you would experience. Um, been with the same company since college. So I've been with J&J. &J. I started, it was supposed to be a summer internship going into my senior year. Um, that internship lasted two years, right? So it's not like your typical path. Um, so I've been with the same company. I didn't have any other internships experiences besides that. So I was pretty lucky in that sense. Um, but when I joined J&J, &J, I joined actually the master data management team which is part of the medical device sector of Johnson Johnson. So there's a couple different groups and segments there, um, but ironically we ended up being global surgery. So somehow I found my way into blood surgery and all that. Um, so that was great. <laughs> Learned a lot um, about myself and definitely about the products. But within that role, I was really responsible for, well, master data management is about, you know, product data and trying to manage it between all the different systems. Sounds simple in theory, but it's actually pretty chaotic. Um, but I was responsible for you know, your typical intern responsibilities, um, running reports, um, organizing team events, stuff like that. But as the time kind of went on, I learned to kind of collaborate more, reach out to the different teams, um, different departments, kind of see where can I help make their jobs a little bit easier. And I think that really kind of helped play into the extension of the internship, showing that I was kind of of somewhat value to the company at that time. They could use me, I can help them. And that kind of really helped, um, I think during that two year time frame. Over time, obviously they gave me more responsibilities within that internship, but overall pretty straightforward. Um, I, 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 can't, I, I can't help myself, but um, <laughs> so you started getting involved in all these things and did I hear that there was some blood involved with the surgery, yeah, the same so, blood you were avoiding with? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm still trying to avoid it. It's, it's <laughs> growth experience, I guess you could call it. Um, but yeah, you know, with product data management, you have to understand what data you're putting into the system. What does it mean? That means what are the products? That means also going to demonstrations of the products. Um, so at that time for global surgery, you, everyone's probably experienced at some point, if you get stitches, you, they have the sutures that kind of sew you up with it. 
um, any hip knee replacements. Um, they have this whole part where they have um, dissolvables that kind of stop the bleeding. So yeah, had to kind of go through that um, training and demonstrations, um, but I'll tell you a little bit later how I kind of made that transition out to medical device. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I'm interested, let, let's talk about the, the early days of the internship. You know, many of our mm -hmm. students are out there trying to find internships or they're, um, they're, they're beginning internships now. Um, first of all, how did you get this internship? And then second of all, you know, what are, what are the early days, like the first couple of weeks? Yeah, so first, um, how I got the internship. Um, full disclosure, I tried hard and hard. I knew I wanted to work for Johnson Johnson. That's kind of at that point what I wanted to do. Um, we had I had some connections that worked with the company, heard from them how great it was, what they've done with the company, given back, all that great stuff. Um, you know, applied on my own a couple times, rejections right away, you know, no big deal. Um, but then I think it's what's really important is making those connections within a industry or within a company that you would like to work for. Once you kind of have that connection, it makes it a little bit easier to get into the door per se. Um, so I really kind of worked on that, like building those relationships, trying to get in. Definitely helped. <laughs> but from a, you know, kind of a day to day in the beginnings of the internship, it was a lot of training you're pretty much back in school, right? So you're doing um, all training based on trying to learn acronyms, trying to learn products, trying to learn systems. So it's really, it keeps you busy. Um, you know, I don't wanna kind of say it's kind of busy work, but it is. You can't really add back or add value and give back without kind of learning what you're doing first. Yeah, So Very a lot of time doing that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, this might be a nice time for just a very brief detour. You mentioned uh, networking and talking to folks. Uh, you're of course doing this during your undergraduate years. And mm -hmm. uh, I know many of our undergraduates are always wondering how can they start networking? How can they start learning about people in, in different industries? And there may be even some self-consciousness about, well, what am I supposed to say? I'm just a student. So how might some of these students begin networking? And again, a little detour, maybe we'll talk about yeah. this again later, but. No, that's okay. We can talk about it. Yeah. So I think within the networking, um, obviously LinkedIn is a great platform. Um, a lot of the companies, including Johnson Johnson, post their jobs directly there as well. So that kind of helps you see who's working in the organization. It doesn't hurt to, you know, um, request someone and then you can kind of message them, not saying, you know, directly, I want a job, how do I get it? But, oh, um, you know, interested in learning X, Y, and Z, how may, um, like, what kind of got you there to that position? What can I do to further develop myself? And once you kind of build that relationship a little bit between not one, maybe a couple of different people as well, they can kind of help you guide you into the company that you're looking for. So what I'm hearing is for the folks who are listening, network, <laughs> network, just do it, network. just do it, reach out, reach out. Great, great. Um, so back to the story, you are an intern there and you're yeah. doing well. They ask you to stay on again. So now it's a two-year internship. How do you go from a two-year intern to now someone who is working at j, &J? Yeah, this is kind of where the story got interesting. Um, after the two years, you know, at that point I had graduated with my MBA. Um, so at that point, we're now in 2015. Um, the company or the department that I was supporting did not have what they call headcount or open positions. So it was either I leave the company at that point, which I knew I did not want to do, I wanted to stay. Um, but they were able to offer me a contractor role at that time. So you kind of weighing, um, what do you want to do based on your career path? You know, if I leave now, can I get back in? What do I do? Do I take a pay cut and take the contractor position? So it was a little bit tough, kind of like a letdown almost. You put in all that work, right? But I, you know what? I was like, you know what? Put my ego aside. I'll take the contractor role. Um, so I did that same, you know, same department, same responsibilities that were increasing at that time. And at that point, six months later, I switched roles again. And at that point I was hired as an employee. So, you know, kind of taking that chance a little bit really did pay off for what I wanted to do. Um, so that's good when for I was, you. Good for you, yeah. by the way, because that's a that, that, that's a point in a career journey where many young folks would say, ah, forget this. I need something more stable and I'm trying to start a career here. Good for you for sticking it out. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. No, no problem. Yeah. I mean, it was a tough decision kind of way. I mean, at the time, you know, I could afford it. There's all these different factors that work into it, but it was something I wanted to do and it ended up working out. Because um, six months later, as I mentioned, I was hired. Um, I had actually transitioned now from a master data management team to what they call quality systems. 
Mm. And that was one of the teams that I had closely collaborated with during my internship. So it's really about building those connections. Even when you're in the company, you want to continue to network. You never know who's going to hire. So that ended up working for me. Um, and what we do within quality systems, it's kind of in between what you call your business function. So your legal team, your um, regulatory teams, your marketing, and between IT. So they work on, you know, making sure that any enhancements or any changes that you make to the systems are compliant within the quality regulations. So it's a lot of fun, um, great exposure between the different teams, you know. Yeah. So I did that for about two years. Um, and then from there, I kind of made a complete pivot in my career path, moved to more of a strategy-based role. Um, so stayed in strategy for about three and a half years within, um, still within med device, within global surgery. But it's, I think during those three and a half years where I grew probably the most professionally, um, at that time, you know, strategy is different. I'm sure the people, one of the students attending today kind of know strategy, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting. I, at the time, was the only one um, in the organization at my level. So again, like an analyst, like a lower level, not to degrade myself, but a lower level, right? <laughs> um, so, but the rest of the team was very top heavy. So a lot of leaders reporting directly to the vice president. So kind of where do I fit in? I went from working with closely with team members, you know, um, not my age, but like my level who I can talk with on a daily basis to kind of having to work a little bit more by myself, more independently and kind of communicate differently. I can't just call up my colleague and kind of gossip, right? Yeah. Kind of had to frame what I'm going to say because now I'm just talking to upper management. So that was a challenge, um, you know, trying to understand kind of the different ways of working and kind of manipulating that. But it's really similar probably to what everyone, I remember at least the courses that I took, um, you know, kind of understanding what the goals of the organization are, um, how we're going to prioritize our projects, um, even our resources and how we're going to deliver value back. So. so there's so there's some connection between what you learn in the classroom and, and there is I tell especially you what, strategy. Yeah, there there you is. <laughs> hear that students, you hear that? We'll talk about, <laughs> more about that in a moment. Um, so so you make a real there's a lot of really good points there that I could pull out and we could talk about for all night, but you know, we don't have so much time. But you mentioned it's important to continue networking within the company. Mm -hmm. So you yep. got the job, you're working the job, you've been there for a while, you still got to network, you still got to learn people, you still got to, you know, figure out who works with who and, you know, who's the, exactly. who's the, who's the power broker. Now you're in the new position. Uh, you, you say there's a lot of growth there. Take us into the growth. Yeah. I mean, it's really tough. Um, like I mentioned, it's mm -hmm. a large company. So you're working globally across the globe. So you kind of have to, you know, it's not nine to five. I'm up with India at 7 a.m. I'm 7 p.m. at night with Japan. So it was really tough. Um, I think also with the growth is learning a little bit more about what I wasn't comfortable with. And I think we'll talk about it later, but it's definitely the financial aspect. Mm. Um, should have paid attention to those classes a little bit more. But, you know, going through the um, accounting and all the financials, I wasn't that comfortable. And now I'm responsible for a huge portfolio. You can't tell, you know, the leaders that I'm working for, right? So you kind of have to do some of that development on your own to really kind of challenge yourself. And I think that's well, um, kind of helped me a little bit, you know, more comfortable speaking with different levels of the organization, um, bottom up, top down. So you're kind of working everywhere across the board, all hours, all groups with different, every subject possible. So it was a lot of fun. It is a good it thing. Hard. To it's fun. <laughs> well, difficult for sure. But it is a very good thing to remember that the education doesn't end when you graduate, the education is ongoing. So you're always yeah. learning about new elements of a company. But maybe we could talk about the education for a moment, particularly the Monmouth education. Are there, are there any lessons from your classes or any experiences from your undergraduate years that stand out to you as particularly formative, uh, particularly for your professional career? Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's two parts of it. I'll talk about the financials a little bit. And then the second lesson, um, pay attention to your accounting and financial classes. I spent a lot of time on Google, you know, trying to figure out balance sheets and different expense types, um, probably should save time there. But, you know, even if you're not working directly in an accounting or a financial department, every aspect of business touches finances in some way. So as I mentioned in that strategy role, I had to oversee billions of dollars. Like I'll never see that in my bank account, but I was responsible for it. Um, trying to make sure it was prioritized in the right way. So understanding some of those lessons, I think a little bit more academically probably would have helped me get onboarded a little bit more faster in that aspect. And even now I'm still using, you know, financial tools um, in my current role. 
I have to, you know, prepare business cases, um, you know, negotiate contractor salaries and different rates, and then try to figure out, you know, within my own particular budget, how do I manage my projects this year and then with the next five years. So it's always taking into account the basics, um, you know, you can always go back to it, but I think it's really helpful to pay attention to that upfront. Um, the By the way, <laughs> something something that I hear from a lot of mom and alumni that, you know, wish you would pay a little bit more attention in this class or that class. Uh, actually, I, I think as you and I spoke prior to this event, um, I told you that I'm also a Monmouth alumnus mm -hmm. and um, a buddy of mine from when I was an undergraduate, this is going back 20 years. Uh, he and I have been getting together and catching up. And he says to me, he goes, you know, I just wish I would have paid more attention in this class and that class and actually looking now to take some college classes to get refreshers on things that he may not have been focused on. So I appreciate okay. you saying that. Uh, of and, and by, the way, by the way, anything else, anything else that stands out as particularly formative? Um, yeah, I think the other piece where I did pay attention, um, I didn't mention this before, but my minor was in information technology, and that has helped me so much um, within the trends currently going on in the business world, but also with the opportunities that I've had within J&J. &J. I knew, um, you know, we, I think within business management, you have to take that one intro class to IT, yep. and it's kind of recommended, um, you know, take the IT minor. It's like, sure, seems fine, whatever, I'll do it. Um, it actually ended up paying off. Um, I'll talk about my transition a little bit to where I am now, but having that foundation of Excel, um, you know, formulas, data, everything, it's everything in business is now run on data. It's so important. It definitely provides some of those opportunities. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I've, I've, I've worked with a lot of students um, as their academic advisor, and <clears throat> I always encourage them to take the IT minor. So it's good mm -hmm. to hear it's working. It's working for it's you. Working. Yeah. It's working good. <laughs> so, so you mentioned the accounting classes. Are there any other classes, maybe any other professors that stand out? Yeah, um, well, it doesn't apply to my current role now, but I remember just Professor Buzza with the entrepreneurship classes, you know, just that challenge in the way that you think a little bit. I think that has definitely played into some of the lessons that I've learned now, kind of, you know, different ways of thinking to do things a little bit more creatively, even though I'm working within a corporation, there's still that creative aspect. So I think that definitely helps. Great, great. Um, what lessons do you think you picked up at the university that are with you even now? I mean, it's been a little bit since you graduated, not, not too long, but it, you know, long enough. So mm -hmm. what, what is still with you today? Yeah, I think um, when I was an undergrad, you know, really putting yourself um, first, I would say, you know, it's really difficult, you know, during undergrad that, you know, all these things are going on, all these different activities. But when I was undergrad, like I had mentioned before, during my internship, I would have to leave Monmouth um, to go home for two to three days during the week just to do the internship and come back. So when I was leaving, you know, everyone would be going out, going to these events, and it's kind of like you feel left out a little bit, but you knew at that time that it was a little bit more important to kind of where I wanted to go in the future. So if it's, you know, joining a different club than your friends or doing something a little bit differently, but knowing that it's best for you at that time, go for it, continue to support yourself. And do what's best for you. <laughs> yeah, this is another another good opportunity, maybe to take a little little detour. So, in your in your video introduction, you, you mentioned to us uh, one of the one of the members of the business fraternity on campus. Mm -hmm. You were a sister, still a sister of ZTA. So, how did those experiences help form some of your business acumen today? Yeah, I think definitely you know learning to work with others, um, even within the different organizations, clubs, um, Greek life, what have you. Um, you know, there's some sort of structure. So you have to work with, um, I don't want to call them departments, but different, you know, areas of responsibility, um, working with people that you may not choose to, or you might not have had the opportunity to that you want to, right? So there's that overall collaboration theme. Um, and, you know, there's the opportunity, I know we mentioned at the beginning, but all that volunteer aspect to give back. So I think those two points definitely between the two organizations really kind of honed in on me for it to help me, you know, kind of go through those different lessons. And so I would love to move to the current and future business climate. Um, yeah. Our students, of course, learn quite a bit about the current professional world. Uh, they learn a lot of it through case studies. We try to do as much as we can with folks like you coming in to visit. Um, chances are what you're experiencing out there in today's professional world might be different than the case studies. So I'd love for you to tell the students, many of whom are getting ready to graduate just a few weeks from now, really. Uh, what's going on out there? What's going on in the business world right now? 
<laughs> yeah, business world is um pretty interesting. I'm sure everyone else, you know, given the pandemic, um, is kind of experiencing that too. So we're kind of trying to navigate, you know, the balance between, um, you know, work, work working from home and trying to transition back into the office. Um, I used to be in the office every single day, well, Monday to Friday, and I've been remote actually still for quite a while. So, you know, trying to figure out, um, you know, at least within our team, it's really important for us to have that collaboration face to face and, you know, be able to travel to the different sites. So really looking forward to doing that. I think, you know, it's nice working from home you know, spend time with the dog, um, but it's, you really start to miss that face to face, you know, interaction, um, you know, that routine that you used to have. So looking forward to that. And I'm sure other companies are starting to transition back as well. Yeah, there's been a, uh, a lot of articles coming out about that. Yeah, and with that too, you know, things are starting to become more and more expensive. Um, so, you know, not just in your personal life, but within the companies as well. So we've had to be a little bit more creative in how we do things a little bit. So either with reduced or limited budgets. So something that would be pretty easily to gain approval for, we might have to do a little bit more creative thinking of like, um, you know, work, working or talking with our teams. Have they done this before? Can we kind of steal and leverage what you've already done? Can we do this together, share the cost? So it's been fun. It's been interesting, um, definitely challenging, but either way, um, however the trends go, hopefully in the positive direction, um, you know, it's important to be flexible and to continue to adapt so that you are ready to tackle or, you know, work with those different environments. By the way, how, how big is the team that, that you're working on? Um, about six or seven okay. plus a contractor. It's very small. Yeah. Okay. So probably easy to manage six or seven folks on a team remotely. It is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because, you know, my direct manager, um, our leader, like no one is at my local site in New Jersey. So for me to go to the office, I'll hang out with my, you know, my previous departments and my old friends, but no one is physically at that site. And it's more and more common, I think, now with these large organizations. You know, we have our team member in Japan that I meet with actually tomorrow and last night. So it's every other, you know, kind of meeting and kind of accommodating different schedules. So not everyone back in the day, I think used to be at your site, you know, your manager would sit next to you, you have your whole team there. It's very different now. Uh, everyone's across the globe. So yeah, different. that's, I mean, that's what it's like working on a global team, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, interesting. So I wonder if you could provide some perspective for the students on maybe things you see in the professional world, not just J&J, &J, but the professional world overall, that maybe we don't see on TV. Maybe the students aren't seeing this on their news feeds. Like, um, is there anything else going on out there that maybe we just don't know about that you can see? Um, not that I can see, no. I think it's, you know, the internal challenges of trying to kind of manage every day with the different costs and expenses, and then kind of navigating that work-life balance. Um, but other than that, I think everything is pretty out in the open. <laughs> yeah. It's it's challenging for sure, but, you know, we get through it. How do you feel about the overall economy? Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of shifts going on out there, and, you know, we could probably spend hours talking about them and the causes of them, but um, how do you feel that's, that's impacting the workplace? Yeah, I mean, especially when you do have such a big and large global organization, every little bit of um, external factor, I guess you can call it, comes into play. So even with different, um, you know, like environmental issues, um, the political issues going on now, every little bit you have to take into account to make sure that your team is safe, first of all, depending on their location, where they are. And if there's anything that we have to adjust for within that strategy. So any projects that we have to push out, you know, you have to be accommodating, you have to be flexible. So I think it's, you know, it's definitely tough, but everyone's, you know, open to that change and to that flexibility to try to do what's best for the company. J&J &J is such a big global company. I assume, and maybe I'm wrong, you'll tell me, that, that there's a team specifically focused on making sure that everyone is okay, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah there is. Um, you know, depending on, especially in New Jersey, if, you know, there's extra or large accumulations of snow, we'll get a text message right away. Um, usually at four in the morning, I'll get a text, an email, and a call saying delayed or canceled, don't come into the office. So there's definitely have a triage um, of a team that, you know, communicates the right information to the right people. Yeah. It's like the Monmouth University alerts. Exactly. So you, <laughs> exactly. You, so you've been, you've been well prepared. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe you can give us, uh, particularly the students who are watching this, uh, 
a view of what you think the job market's going to look like. Now, again, they're all getting ready to graduate here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, looks like a couple of students may be graduating next year, which is really not that far away. What do you think the job market's going to look like for these folks? Oh, yeah, the job market's great, at least within my industry um, for pharmaceuticals, right? And I mentioned it before, the importance of the IT classes. Um, everything within data analytics, data science, um, has so much potential. There are so many opportunities. Um, you know, everyone, leaders, they come to you, they want something automated and they want to know what's the risk right away. Well, it's a little bit more complicated, you know, than kind of like a five minute exercise. A lot goes into it. So I think having that skill set, that technical skill set, is definitely an advantage. A lot of people don't have it, they don't have the time to get that training or get that acumen. So having that experience is definitely, I think, an asset. Um, the other piece, I think, you know, along with the technical aspect of it is the people side too, right? Because you have, you can have all the technical skills that you want, but if you don't have the people side of the business, um, you don't know, like understand how to work with others, you don't know how to develop your team, you can't really, you know, succeed on your own. You have to work within a team. So I think, you know, those two skill sets hand in hand really would be an advantage in the market today. And they are, there's definitely opportunities. Hear that folks? So not just the hard skills, but the soft skills. Soft skills are very important. Uh, and again, you can you can learn a lot of those soft skills by being involved in groups on campus and, you know, yeah, uh, exactly joining a club or some other group on campus. A great way to learn it. Um, let's talk about you. What, what, what do you hope to achieve here in the professional world? Let's say the next five to 10 years. Oh, I knew you're going to ask me this. one. <laughs> Um, I'll get back to you. Actually, my seven year plan is due next month. Um, have I started it? No, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, it's not a um, question that, you know, you, you should not expect, right? You should always be planning. Um, everyone's always asking you to plan for the next five to seven years. So, you know, I think it's important to have, you know, regardless of where I am, if I'm still in the same department or within a different department, continuing to learn. Um, you know, once you start to get a little bit too comfortable, you get bored and that kind of impacts your performance a little bit. So making sure to keep that challenge, um, you know, with myself personally to see where I can continue to grow and learn and get back. Um, but yeah, definitely want to stay within the company. Um, that's my seven year plan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean that, look, that in itself is, uh, uncommon mm -hmm. there, you know, I'm sure you know this, but, um, your generation, my generation, the, the research around it says, folks, job hop, you know, a year yeah. here, six months there, two years there. And you've managed to not do that. You've been with j, j for a long time and you see yourself staying for a long time. I think that's great. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's crazy during, you know, we had these larger town, what they call town hall meetings. Um, they recognize different employees and there's people within the organization 35, 40 years. So it's just absolutely incredible to see kind of that experience that skill set that you know we as the younger generation can learn from so it's been great really great company really great models of success that you can yeah. say look they did it for 35 years 45 years and you just learn from that they're there they're right there, they're there. Learn from. yeah exactly so uh <laughs> but it, you know it gives it gives us a good opportunity to take maybe another little bit of a detour uh we do a lot of detours in these things no problem <laughs> um, to talk about the credo so the, yeah. the, the j and credo is widely known. It's known not just in the company, but in pharmaceuticals and throughout business. Uh, how often and early did they start talking to you about their credo? Oh, right away. Um, I, actually, it's kind of ironic. Um, before I started working for the company while at Monmouth, I had graduated from the honor school. And as part of my thesis, I did an analysis on the credo. So kind of, you know, it's always been kind of in my blood, I guess you can say, ironic how it worked out. But um, you always knew about it or like kind of looked into it, um, investigated it, right? And then, you know, day one, as soon as you walk into the door, you see it, whether you're in New Brunswick at headquarters, if you're at smaller site, it's there. It's on every wall. It's in every conference room. They give you printouts. Um, when they revised it, maybe two or three years ago, we got new printouts, right? Um, so it's, it's everywhere. <laughs> from That's great. Yeah. It shows, it shows a commitment. It shows a commitment on behalf of the company. Uh, you know, it's interesting. One of the, um, one of the questions that I got from several of the students once we publicized this event was, Hey, how can I work at J and J? So <laughs> do you have any advice for the students on, on how they can maybe get an internship that can turn into a career? Yeah. Um, I mentioned LinkedIn before, you know, building those networks, um, you know, feel free to reach out to me as well. Uh, you know, I can definitely help 
kind of navigate. I know when you look at the different career sites, whether it's J&J, whether it's others, it's kind of hard to read the job descriptions. A lot of it may not make sense, right? It's a lot of, um, you know, those companies acronyms or different terminology. So I think it's helpful, um, you know, if you think you're a good match, maybe 75%, you think you can do most of it, but you don't know all of it, that's okay too. You're not expected to come in knowing everything all at once. So I think that's important, you know, take the chance, what's gonna happen, you know, like, no, I've gotten no a bunch of times when I first started, um, but they don't want you, they want, as a leader, you want to help kind of develop the person who's coming into that role. Otherwise, how is it gonna benefit them or you, vice versa? So I think that's important as well. Um, but yeah, I, I know, Joe, you have my contact information. If anyone wants to look for me at LinkedIn, that's fine too. It can kind of help, um, you know, where to start, where to navigate. But By the way, great, <laughs> great advice, great advice, folks. Um, if you're looking at a job description and you're thinking, gosh, this isn't a perfect fit, but it's a 75% fit, go for it, go for it. You know? I wasn't qualified for the job I'm in now. I did not have, you know, the product ex expertise I should have, but, you know, that data side um, really kind of saved me, I guess I would say. So, you know, it's, it's great. It doesn't always match hundred percent, but the opportunities are out there. It's always worth it. It's always worth it. Uh, another, another question, this is always a question that comes in for the game series um, is maybe a couple of favorite Monmouth university memories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I think it's great. Um, you know, I had, the, well, I guess the first of all started out as the Monmouth Mondays, met what would have been one of my future roommates at that time. So that was great. I think it's just the overall experience and the atmosphere, that kind of close connection that you get, um, you know, just from the campus, just from the different activities, there's always something to do. You just have to go and find it. Um, and I think it's just endless. And, you know, the beach too. How can I not mention that? <laughs> of course, of course. So, uh, this gets into the part of the conversation where I'd love for you to give some advice to our students and maybe we can talk about being a student. So you were, you were a student, then you were an MBA student, an honor school student. Um, what advice do you have for the students on being a student? Oh yeah, that's hard. Uh, <laughs> I think I mentioned this before a little bit, but you know, really just putting yourself first, you know, there's going to be challenges that come about. Um, there's always going to be conflicts. There's always going to be opportunities. So kind of really weighing the risk of what's best for you at the time. Um, you know, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to kind of learn from those challenges and really just embrace everything. You know, it goes by so fast. So, you know, just really taking that time to take all the opportunities you can get without overdoing it, you know, and just having a really great time learning and growing from it. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Um, tell us a little bit about the, the transition into that five-year MBA program. Um, oh, that was the best decision ever. Um, it was really easy. I think I highly recommend it. I always knew I wanted to do some sort of higher education with that. Um, if I knew I had taken a break in between, probably wouldn't have gone back, honestly. There's just no time. Um, so I was really lucky to have the internship at that time where it was a little bit more flexible. So I could kind of balance the two. But if I had started working absolutely full time, there was no way I would go back and do a program for two to three years. Um, so it was really easy to kind of, you know, not stop, keep going and kind of navigating through that. So I highly recommend it for those who have the opportunity to do so. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a good point. It, it is difficult to be in that mode when you're an undergraduate and, you know, you've got assignments and you do them and, you know, you, you get into that groove and then you graduate. It is difficult to take a bit of a gap and then yeah. say, let me get back into that mode. I mean, at that point, you'll never go back. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very rare. It's very rare. You know, you've got a job, you may have a family, you may have other obligations and to put all that aside, to jump back into that mindset, the five-year program is, is the way to go. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, maybe you can talk for a, a little bit about um, maybe something from your undergraduate years that stands out to you now in your post Monmouth life? So not necessarily your professional life, but maybe in your personal life or social life, you know, something that the students should be aware of that, hey, be aware of this because in your personal life later on, it's gonna play an impact. <laughs> yeah, I think it's kind of around the theme that, you know, time just goes by so quickly to really make that time and effort to have those connections, you know, personally within your friends, within your family to really spend the time to kind of dedicate that, um, you know, it goes by so quickly. And then even during college, it flies by. And then now, you know, work takes over, as I mentioned, you know, personal life kind of goes out the window, but really making sure that you make that 
connection and you make those opportunities happen because it just, it goes by so quickly. It does. It does. Yeah. yeah this, this actually reminds me of a, of a question I, I may have asked or wanted to ask earlier about the work you do with new hires. Again, we're talking to, tonight to students who are about to graduate, but we will at some point show this video to students who are you know, on the, on the precipice of graduation. How do you work with new hires? Like you specifically at J and J, like, what do you, what do you do with them? Yeah, actually, I work with new hires a lot, um, you know, through different processes. I had interns and new contractors report to me directly. Um, you know, I helped with different interviews with the new hires. And then I work with new hires once they've been onboarded to different departments or different functional areas. So, you know, it's, you know, I'm constantly interacting with them. What's great about J&J is there are so many opportunities. And I guess from my career path, you can see I bounce around a lot too, right? It's typically common to keep moving. So you're always going to have um, that kind of new turnover a little bit to work with the different new hires. Um, you can always tell when they come in, they're super motivated, super excited to kind of join, um, you know, contribute, which is great. But I think, you know, one caution of advice is um, you're not expected to know everything. So, you know, you come in, you wanna solve all the problems, you know, kind of take that step back and, you know, listen, kind of learn and kind of, you know, ask the questions to make sure that you can continue to make those best decisions to help get back. Good advice, everyone listening ask questions. Uh, it's okay not to know everything. You're not yeah. expected to be, you know, 50 years into a career on day one. It's okay. Figure <laughs> out, figure out the right way to do things. Um, so now, so now I'm curious because you, because you've worked with new hires. Um, what is the best things that you see from new hires, the best characteristics, the best traits, the best qualities? Oh, I had the best intern. He was great. I wish he kind of stayed with the company. He had to move on, but um, he was, he was really great. Um, you know, he kind of took the initiative, you know, without being too forthcoming, you know, kind of, I don't want to say know your place, but you kind of respected the boundaries and the different levels of the organization. Um, so he knew that right away. He kind of knew, understood the culture. Um, he knew what was expected of him and he asked the right questions. I didn't have to explain something five times that I've already explained. He took the notes, he knew what to do. Um, and then he asked me questions about how he can make it better for me. So, you know, and then he delivered it on time, you know, just delivering things on time, or if you need an extension, you know, you speak up and you say something, you just don't let it fall through the cracks. So, you know, it was great. I mean, I've had different company or different, um, you know, new hires come through kind of doing similar things. So all those habits I think were definitely great and appreciated for sure. <laughs> So, so now, of course, I'm curious about the opposite question. Like, what are, what are some <laughs> observations you've made over the years with some new hires, interns, or, or folks who are working there where you go, gosh, there's really a, a gap in the skill set here? Yeah, I mean, I'm gap in the skill set's okay, too. You know, there's that opportunity to learn. But when, you know, they just don't want to, it's pretty obvious. You can see, like, the lack of participation or the lack of enthusiasm or, um, you know, just just a cold personality, I guess you can say. Um, so just, yeah, I think that this kind of stands out a little bit. I would definitely not do that. <laughs> yeah. People it's observe noticed these. by everyone. Yeah. yeah. People watch all the time at work. It's great, but. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, everyone watches that stuff. Everyone is on. The everyone lookout. watches. And, and if someone's having a bad day, people chalk it up to a bad day, but when having a bad week and then a bad month, they go, that might be a bad person. So, It'll yeah. start laying out some signs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really, re really good advice for folks who are paying attention and listening to this. Um, so that, so that gets me uh, towards, towards the end of, of, of our conversation here. Uh, I wonder, do you have any parting words of wisdom for the students? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I guess a piece of advice that I received actually recently from a leader at J&J that I look up to, you know, kind of having those conversations, you know, my seven year plan, right, that I didn't do. Um, you know, I was kind of nervous because my career path isn't typical, right? But he said, um, you know, don't worry about your career path. You know, the typical path is often the most crowded. And so to really embrace your own journey, you can have those differences. It leads to more opportunities. So don't be afraid to embrace that. So that's definitely stuck with me and it happened like a month ago. So I'm going to continue to use that. <laughs> I love it. The, the, the typical path is often the most crowded. Great, great parting words of wisdom. Well, Caitlin, thank you. This has been wonderful. It's uh, so much fun. I, Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate you spending the time with, with uh, me and my students tonight. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you for joining appreciate us. It. We appreciate it. Thank you everyone for joining and we'll see everyone next time. Take care. Thank you so much.
Bye.